Hey there, Touch Designer Programmers. Matthew here for one final installment on this idea. So the last thing that we're going to kind of explore is we're going to take this kind of idea and we're going to push it so that we get end up with something like this, right? This kind of like spacey, dreamy, crazy, weird thing. And we're going to use a bunch of the stuff that's already done for us here, right? We've really done the lion's share of the work. And so now it's really just a matter of thinking a little bit differently about how we actually want to draw some of this, how we want to play with, with this a little bit. So with that in mind, let's head back into process. We're going to go ahead and um, take advantage of our circle that's already drawn here. Let's scoot this up. Yoink. We're going to grab that, copy, paste it. Whoa. Not what we wanted to do. This guy, copy, paste. We're going to grab our circle. We are going to make it into a polygon. We're going to let it be uh, just like this. We're going to rotate it. Uh, and abs time dot seconds is too slow. Dot frame is going to be too fast, so let's multiply that by, say, 0.1. 0 0.5 maybe. That seems mm, pretty decent. Well, let's just leave it at time.frame for right now. Huh? All right. I'm happy with that, actually. Uh, we're going to go ahead and plug that right in here to our fit. So far, so good. We're going to, while we're at it, uh, we're going to take our fill and turn our fill way down. We're going to turn our border width up. Now, we want to give ourselves a border color that's something uh, kind of bright. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick like a magenta. Why not? So now we've got this bright magenta here that's getting drawn. We can see it being drawn over time. Lovely. Okay. So, there it is. That's, that's a, a solid start to what we're after. Now let's go ahead and start with, well, before we do anything else crazy, let's remember, well, mm, now nah, let's, let's uh, dive right into some of this fun stuff first. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and grab a feedback. We're going to start with a, a simple feedback network. We're just going to grab that. Our feedback is going to go ahead and it's going to feed into a blur. This should all look pretty familiar to those of you that have done any feedback level, uh, networks. We're going to use a level. Uh, our level, we can go ahead and in our post opacity, we can go down to 0 0.919. We're going to composite again. And for our composite method, let's go ahead and use add. We're going to grab this guy, make sure that's on top, right? And we can complete our feedback loop. Add and not a top. There we go. All right, so this is kind of glowy and fun. Um, but I don't want it to be totally like this. Uh, and looking at my blur, I think I actually want my blur to be more like 18. There we go. It's just nice and soft and smoky-like. Now, this is still, this is like, very disco fever, but uh, it lacks some of the sharpness um, that I want to have. So I'm actually going to go ahead and drop in an over top, and we're going to put our original image here over the top of all of this business. And that's going to give us something here where we've got nice sharp edges on top of uh, this glowing shenanigans. It's just great. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, and we can go ahead and just end that in a null. Yoink. Now this is all well and good. You know, we've got something that's that's working here. It's jamming right along. But we don't have very much movement in our camera. Uh, so what happens if we start to think about how we can move our camera around in this a little bit more? And to that end, let's go ahead. I'm going to grab this process business and put it down here at the bottom. And we're going to add one more base. And this base, we're going to call path. And let's go ahead and dive inside here. So in path, we're going to start uh, with a circle. So 
what we're up to is we want to describe the path that our camera can follow inside of this thing because we want it to be able to wander and drift a little bit. So I'm going to start with a circle. It's going to be a polygon. Uh, I want to draw it in the ZX plane, right? If I was to see that, I want to draw it in this direction. Um, radius can be one and one, that's fine. I'm going to make this an open arc instead. I don't want it to be closed. I'm going to go 0 to 145. Right, I only want a portion of this. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and transform. Whoops. This just slightly. Um, and I happen to know already, because I've been noodling around with this, that I want to go to about like 25. Excuse me, negative 13. I'm just kind of adjusting where this path sits here a little bit. You can see it way down here. You see it kind of showing up. And I'm actually going to crank on the scale a little bit to make it even bigger. So now we've got this kind of like crescent-like path here, which is great. Now, I don't want this path to be totally uniform. I mean, I'd love that it's uniform, but I'm not totally sold on that. So I'm going to go ahead and SOP2 to grab all this information about how this line is drawn. And with this SOP2, I am also going to go ahead and draw a couple pieces of noise. Uh, and let's start with just this one. So noise 1, uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a period like 0 0.8 and an exponent that's 3, 4, 9. These are all numbers that you can kind of noodle around with the more that you start to explore. This just happens to be uh, a look that I'm mostly happy with. Abs time dot frame. There we go. We can see, oops, seconds, not frame. So we've got a little bit of movement in here. We're going to go ahead and call this TX. We're going to try and call it TX. <laughs> we'll go ahead and make the samples and samples, and we're going to use our lovely trick that we've already learned. Transform 1, I think is what's up here. Transform 1, yep. Transform 1, and we want num, uh, num points. Perfect. All right, so we've got a little bit of movement in here. We can kind of see that moving around. Let's go ahead and grab a math. So we're going to take this little bit of very slight movement. We're going to go ahead in our range position from negative 1 to 1. We're going to change that to negative 20 to 20. So we've got a lot more kind of variation in that. We're going to add another math. Because what I want to do is I want to grab my original. I want to grab my new one. And then in math, I'm going to combine channels by adding them together. Perfect. Excellent. And that should be combined chops. <laughs> I'm going to combine chops by adding them together. That's really what I want. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to... Oops. I'm going to copy-paste. And I want to do this for Y also. Now, I'm doing this in a separate um, operator here because I want the flexibility of kind of rearranging this just a little bit. I'm going to leave some of this the same right now. I'm only going to change my scaling to be negative 30 to 30 for right now. And we'll change the name, TY, TY. But we're going to leave this here because this allows you to have some other kind of controls in terms of thinking about how you're pushing and pulling around some of these curves. Now we can see here right now these curves have got the same shape even. Um, so we might, while we're at it, let's go ahead and make the period on this like 1. So they've got a different shape. And there we can kind of see how these guys have got a different shape to them. Next, what we'll do is we'll use a chop to SOP. We're going to use this math to convert ourselves right back. And now we can see, we should be able to see, as soon as we get this configured correctly, we're going to take out TZ.
and yeah, ah there we go we get here in a little bit we can see how it's got a kind of movement to this curve it's got a little bit of non-uniformity to it finally so now we've got a curve that's got a little wiggle and move and shimmer and what you call it which is just what we want we're going to connect that to a null uh, let's go ahead and call it final because why not give it a good name all right now we'll back out of here Whew, finally now we can come over here to camera and in x form in path we can specify that path slash final that's going to be our path that's the thing that's actually going to drive where we sit right that's where we are now we also can control our position on this path which is our next uh, kind of secret ingredient that we're going to be up to here um, let's go ahead and before we forget, we need a few turn off a few things. So we need to turn off all of our transformations um, because we want to rely on the path that we've defined to be able to do that for us. See how this is kind of like pushing us around inside of this thing? That's exactly what we want. This puts us right in the middle of all of our pixels, over the right-hand side of it, over to the left-hand side of it. Let's go back into the path for one second. Now in here, we're going to go ahead and add an LFO. And we're going to let this LFO actually be the thing that drives us in terms of our position. Let's go ahead and make this Gaussian. And we're going to give it a frequency of 0 0.01. And I think that's really all we need to do. It's going to have a nice transition from 0 up to 1 and then back down which means here in our camera, we can control position with the operator that's in path slash LFL1, and we're going to use Chan1. And now we've got this lovely drift through this moving, shifting field here. Now, one of the things that's important for us to remember is that we can dive here into process, and at any point, we could lock this flat, or we could lock our final texture here. Oh, that's great. We can see it kind of like teeter-totter here. And that's actually, if we come up to our camera, let's, not, let's choose to not orient along our path. So what we've done by locking our textures, we've just frozen it in time. So now we can see ourselves really just drift left to right inside of this crazy field. If we look down here at our path, we should reverse direction here shortly. And for just a second, we might go ahead and speed this up just so we can get a sense of where we're moving. As we dip right through the middle and back the other side. Now our transform here allows us, if we want to, we could transform this back further or closer. And we can really get a sense now of how our camera is moving and what we're seeing. Right, we're really looking deep through a bunch of the kind of instances that we've drawn. We might decide that we want to get a little bit closer into this. Maybe split the difference. Now again, at any point, we could uh, choose to come back down here into our process. We could unlock this, which turns the motion back on. If we feel like this motion's too fast, we can always turn our LFO down. We're still getting this sense of moving. The world is crazy. Um, we can play around with, is maybe it's a noise that we're seeing. Whoa, that's really psychedelic. Um, or it's this ramp again, that we're drifting through this uh, kind of crazy shifting field of, um, of se ramping sequences. We could come back to our footage if we want to drive, uh, kind of swim through our footage here a little bit. We could go back to our banana if we wanted something uh, just kind of straightforward. We could even go back to our circle if we wanted something that felt 
uh, a little more stable in its geometric kind of inklings. We can really start to play with anything that we want to in this regard. And so this is the kind of uh, technique that I wanted to share. This is a lot of fun. I enjoy this uh, a whole lot, um, especially if you start to play with what this means in terms of uh, working with audio in real time. Whoa, yeah. Some noisy action there in our movement. Uh, part of what I really love about the noise in our camera movement is that that's very unpredictable, right? That's pseudo-random numbers, so we really don't, and know exactly where we're going to end up um, landing with that. We might also play with some noise in terms of the look at where we're looking in this. And so this is, um, you know, a really fun kind of way to think about how we play with instances, how we play with instances and representations of space and time, uh, and how we can kind of move through them, swim through them, uh, and experience them, experience them a little bit differently. Coming soon uh, to a bat channel near you are some more ideas about how we play with instances, how we understand instances, uh, and how we can work with them. So that is coming up, don't you worry, because I am all about instancing these days. Uh, but for now, I think this is enough to get us in trouble and at least get some of you pushing and manipulating pixels in a new and fun way. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hope you're having a great time programming and keep up the good work.